Yeah, I know. One look at this, and you're saying to yourself, what in hell is he doing now? Well, as you call from the last couple of videos, or last video anyway, I have this sort of homemade horn machine created out of parts from various Victor machines, and most of it being from a Victrola 4. Somebody tried to make their own Victor 2. And uh, my theory being it's probably a production company looking for some set decoration that might actually work when needed. Uh, the owner requested that I find a way to eliminate the seam that was in the front of the machine where the sound doors are. You see, this is one of the sound doors here. I'm just using it to spread out the pressure there a bit. There was a big seam in the middle. He wanted to know if I could find something to block that off. Well, after searching through all of my junk and calling around and asking if anybody had another Victor Ford case somewhere, Maybe they wouldn't mind busting up for a, a side panel I could use, preferably the one with the ID plate. Don't need the ID plate, but that uh, didn't really find one. So what I did was I finally had to get a custom made piece of wood. I am not a cabinet maker. I uh, don't usually do this sort of thing. I really was only going to do the, the motor service on this and replace the mainspring, but I figured why not? We'll give it a shot. I mean, this is not an original machine anymore. I really can't hurt it. You know, I'm not destroying a piece of history here. That's been done already. So I will try to improve its appearance a little bit. Uh, so I found a, a piece of oak, sort of. And there you see it's in there already. It's being, it's being glued, sort of similar in the grain. And I uh, had it made to the right uh, width. All, all I had to do was cut it down a bit. It was a little bit long, uh, which I did. I actually do own a circular saw, small one, but I do own one. What I did not own was any kind of sanding equipment, not even a sander block. So since it takes the same batteries as my other Ryobi equipment, I uh, bought this palm sander specifically for this project. And it'll probably never get used again because I do not do cabinet work. I don't restore machines. I improve them as much as they can be improved by cleaning them. I leave original finishes alone, however much might be left of it. And that's what I do. I don't uh, sand and go through all the process of refinishing cabinets because I simply don't have the facilities for it, don't have the tools for it, and really don't have the experience for it. But this is a little bit of repair that, like I said, I can't really harm this. So if I'm going to do something, I might screw it up it's better to do it on something like this than a horn machine worth, you know, a thousand, two thousand, six thousand, whatever. So we'll, we'll do it on this. Okay, this is um, going to be the seam, as you see there, is going to be covered with these. I did not make these. These were already on the machine, but they fell off because for some unknown reason. Somebody put that caulking on there to hold them on. And boy, did I have a... That's primarily the reason I needed the damn sander. was because I could not get that caulking off, off the finish. It was like just glued to it. So finally, I just... And of course, the old glue that whoever made this put on there probably 50 years ago. You know, I had to get that off too. So it sanded off eventually. I had to have clean surface so that the glue would stick. What am I using? carpenter's wood glue. Do not use caulking or epoxies, crazy glue. This stuff is cheap. It's easily available at every Home Depot and hardware store in the country. Or you don't want to use Elmer's, there's other brands of carpenter's wood glue that will do it the same thing. Essentially, it's a high glue. It's a high glue. It's the same stuff you played with in elementary school. It'll make your fingers all wrinkly and all of that stuff. Uh, it's easy to clean up. It cleans up with water. It's excellent to bond wood. It's what it's made for. You can use white glue too. Elmer's white glue works also. But they actually do make a special formulation for wood. And why not get it? Because it is available. And, and like I said, it's not expensive. So if you have to glue on some veneer, maybe there's a loose joint somewhere in the cabinet or whatever, use this. And of course, bar clamps. These aren't that expensive either. These are good ones. Uh, Jorgensen. 
uh, clamps. You can get these Home Depot, other places, mail order, eBay. They're all over the place. And you need them if you're doing any kind of work like this. Mostly I use these for gluing together loose cabinet joins and uh, veneers. You know, for, for uh, gluing veneers back on. I, I don't really make cabinets or anything like that. This is the closest to making a cabinet I have ever come. And I'm never doing this again. <laughs> but uh, uh, you can see there's the piece of wood in there. It's all glued. It's okay if it's a little slobbery on the inside. Uh, once that's dry, that's probably going to take a couple days because we are no longer in summer weather here. It is, it is 45 degrees out here. It's definitely not nice and warm, but that's okay. We have time. Then I will glue on these once these, these are going to have to be sanded also, obviously. But once this is all back together, I will glue these back onto the cabinet. Then I can attach the motor and motorboard back on there, the horn assembly. And then, oh, no, no, I forgot the other process I have to do. You probably notice how this finish looks like this color. And the new piece looks that color, natural wood. That's red oak, by the way, that's on there. Uh, so I'm going to have to try to match this. Now, whoever built the fake horn machine also messed with the finish. This is not a shellac finish on there. Um... I can't clean this up I, other than dust it. I can't lighten it up to a more golden color that I'm more used to with these fours. Uh, so what I'm gonna have to do is try to match that color as much as I can. I got a stain that I think is close and I'm gonna mix a little bit of red mahogany powder with it to give it a more reddish color like you see on there. To try to match it a little bit, brownish red color. I think it may, we're up to experiment on the inside a little bit to see what it comes out to be. I'll try to get it close anyway. I can't promise it will be 100%, but the seam will be gone. The cabinet will be more structurally sound because that mess they had before was just wobbling all over the place. That's, that's no good. When I get done with this thing, it's at least gonna play records. If nothing else, it's going to do that. You know, it's never going to be an original horn machine. It will only kind of look sort of like one, that's it. Ironically, this does actually appear to have an original horn on it. You know, that, and I'm uh, not sure about the elbow. I think that's repop. But the horn itself does look an original Victrola horn, which is probably worth more than the rest of the machine. And uh, you saw in the last video, the motor, that's all finished. I uh, put a new mainspring in that. That's working fine. No problems there. I modified the, uh, the governor assembly to use the later model governor, the improved governor, because I had no parts to fix the other one, because that is essentially... A motor from a, an earlier horn machine. That's what they used in these early... This is like a, a late 1911, very early 1912 Vic, Victrola 4. They were still using the older style motor that you would find in a Victor 2, for instance. Which is probably what they sourced it from. So the parts, they are different. They are different. And uh, they don't necessarily interchange with the later motors... You know, from 19, late 1912 on up through the 20s, there were various changes that were made along the way. My problem was the governor bearings. Uh, the older motors used a different governor bearing shell and governor bearing and governor shaft. So I had to change all of that to the, the new improved version and get it to work. I managed it. The, the other video tells that story. But this all now, it's Thanksgiving Day, by the way. Happy Thanksgiving, everybody. And uh, I will let this sit for however long it takes to securely dry up that uh, that glue. This does dry pretty good. It is not usually a problem. It does not dry as quickly as crazy glues and epoxies and crap like that that you should never be using on wood. Like this, this kind of repair. But uh, it will eventually dry. And when it does, I will continue the project. But that is how I have solved the issue of how to get rid of the seam in the middle because they had just used these sound doors put together there. I think that's shown in yet another video uh, with a big seam down the middle of them. They turn them around backwards. They glued them on with epoxy. But I don't think the original constructor used epoxy. This was done sometime later by someone trying to kind of, when the parts started falling off, you know, they, they put that to get it back up. Maybe that's all they had or they just had zero knowledge of, of how to do something like that. I don't know. But uh, it is complicating my life, that's for sure. Only one of the corner posts there is, is still actually glued on originally. I'll check it to make sure it stays that way. 
The other three are all like this with this goober on them. I got to clean them up. But uh, that's, uh, see, even the escutcheon here is different. This is the early style escutcheon that you'll find on a lot of horn machines. Later on, the screw pattern stretches out a little bit. It gets bigger. So if that was missing, I would have a pro I would have to modify that too. But I don't, fortunately, that is actually there. All right. Oh, let's try not to knock that off the table. Here we go. You can see the rest of it looks pretty good. And these fours, and you can see it on the wood on the inside, they do not use veneers. That's the one saving grace here. I don't have to deal with veneers on this. These use natural, regular solid boards. These are all solid boards or solid oak in there. So that's one nice thing about working with these littler machines. No veneer. Not on the top, not on the bottom. Nowhere. It it's, makes life a lot easier <laughs> in a way. But, uh, you know, I like to work on all kinds of Victrola, so I will have veneer in my life again, probably with the next Victrola 9, of which there are two very close by here right now waiting for my attention. All right. There you go. Good look at it. And, yes, you cabinet makers out there are probably all giggling and saying, look what he did. Why did he do it that way? I'm not a cabinet maker. Doing the best I can. A little bit at a time. It is getting done.